John. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, so you are a king? Jesus answered, you say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. The verse that is critical to the interpretation of this passage, I believe, is verse number 36. My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handled over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Not my fight, not my way. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. This is not my fight, Jesus is proclaiming to the rulers of the Roman community. This is not my way. If it were my kingdom, we'd be doing it differently. And if I were from your kingdom, I would do exactly what you do because you people of this world establish and keep power through violence and only violence. Jesus says boldly, not my fight, not my way. Jesus will never defend himself through the use of violence. Jesus will not establish his claims by violence. Jesus will never usher in God's kingdom through violence. Jesus will make no followers through violence. Violence is not God's way. Rather than accept the cross as love and unconditional love, too many preachers today, too many congregations today believe that cross represents somehow a scale to balance how many sins have I committed and what do I get on the other side. The cross isn't seen as unconditional love, unmerited favor, mercy, not getting what we deserve, but the cross is seen as punishment. If you fear, if you love, if you obey, conditional, that is not biblical. Turn on most biblical radio preachers, most television preachers, and you will hear nothing but a scale. That is not Christian theology. It's not Bible textual, contextual reading that's accurate. It is false teaching. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So we Lutherans, are we not of the same belief as Quakers, Mennonites, Brethren, Amish? Are we not conscientious objectors? No, we are not. Lutherans believe in the two kingdoms theory, the two hands theory, the authority of the government. We believe as good Lutherans, as good Lutherans who follow Jesus, we believe that the temporal authorities are here for a reason. And yes, there are police who shoot certain people of color. And if you want those persons of color to not be shot, we do a number of things. Don't pull the trigger. What will we do but support those in law enforcement, those in the military? I had a terrible decision to make and a blessed decision to make before I went to St. Paul's. 16 years ago, the decision was, am I going to be past the age of capability of going into full-time active duty military service, will I go into the army or will I remain in the parish? And after receiving an exception clause from the chief of chaplains in Washington, D.C., 
After almost four months of going through all kinds of red tape and paperwork, it came down to the wire, and I didn't do what is such a conflict inside of me still remains a conflict. I was a Boy Scout, and as a Boy Scout, I just expected that I would serve in the military. And I didn't serve because I became a parish pastor, but I thought after 20-some years of ministry, can't I be a pastor in the military? Can't I bring peace and hope and joy and love in the military? Can't I take my bag of tricks, my skill set as a therapist? Can't I go help that branch of the armed forces that needs good therapists? The highest divorce rate is in the Army, not in the Air Force, not in the Navy. But to be a military chaplain, to be an officer in the military, I thought that would be something worthy of not only being proud of, but being a place where I could serve, serve God, serve others, serve my country. And instead, I chose Fleetwood. And I think the people of Fleetwood are glad I didn't choose the military. I think the people of Fleetwood are glad that the army that I work with was not an army that took up weapons, but an army that took up the sword, the word of God, an army that took up the practices of discipleship, and that place, that group of people, that community of people that fought against hunger, fought against poverty, fought against biblical illiteracy, fought against butts and bucks in the pews that weren't going to do anything to change the nature of the kingdom that they lived in and the community and beyond. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. All the kings and rulers of today all the heads of state and presidents around the globe, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I am not a Quaker. I am not a pacifist. I am for armed forces, and I am for armed forces and protection of democracy around the globe. In my congregation, I'm not aware of one active duty or reserve duty member in all of St. John's Evangelical Lutheran Church. I'd be proud on Veterans Day to lift up the names of those who are active duty. Bob, I'm so grateful for your granddaughter who serves faithfully. Maybe some of our students will choose that route, a route of education. Maybe they'll go to one of our institutions of higher education. Maybe they'll go to Annapolis or West Point or to Colorado or to the Coast Guard Academy. Maybe we as a congregation could take up that kind of cause, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. I studied Martin Luther King Jr. for a year and a half. Everything I could get my hands on, I read about Martin Luther King Jr. I work with some of the folks in the United States that study all of his work and study his life. What an interesting man. Brilliant. But a life at conflict with the declassified FBI tapes unveiled his personal life and the side of his life that was corrupt the side of his life that was immoral. And still in his life, he did great things. And of all the passages I've ever read, this is my favorite passage. The ultimate weakness, says Martin Luther King Jr., the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is a descending spiral begetting the very thing it seeks to destroy. Violence gets violence. Instead of diminishing evil, it multiplies it. Through violence, you may murder the liar, but you cannot murder the lie, nor establish the truth. Through violence, you may murder the hater, but you do not murder hate. In fact, violence merely increases hate. Go to Washington, D.C. now. He didn't write that. That's my edit. So it goes. Returning violence for violence multiplies violence, adding deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars. Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can drive out darkness. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. 
In my community, I have seen more suicides in my three and a half years here than any, any singular community I've ever served as a parish pastor. I've seen more abuse of drugs here than I have in any community I've served in 30 years of ministry. Violence will not solve the problems of drugs or broken relationships or broken communities. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. If my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, I will hear them. I will heed their cries. I will come to their rescue, but not by power, not by might. Not my fight, Jesus says, not my way. If we want our children to be safe, we need to create a world and use local authorities to create safety. We need to work together and not look for our own self-centered needs but we need to work together to be the community of people to provide a safety net. As a congregation, we are central to this community. We are at its heart. But I don't believe we are known by our community as being heart central to our community. I believe the students that attended last week and I believe the parents who were here for that preschool Sunday I believe they know that St. John's means it when we say, you are valuable to us. You mean something to us. We will not conquer you through violence. We will encourage you through love. We will not conquer you through a cross that tells you all that you have done is wrong and you are sinners and you're going straight to hell, but rather we are a place that believes in a cross where a resurrected Jesus says, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. And all people will be united around that message. I don't know of a community of believers that can thrive on knowing that each day we confess our sins where someone's going to convict us because of our sins. Rather, I know communities of faith where when sins are committed, the people gathered offer forgiveness and offer love and support to change ways that are wayward to the mandates of Scripture. I'd like us to be known as that congregation in our community and beyond. I'd like for us to be known as the community that seeks to make sure that there are no mouths that are empty. I'd like for our community to know not only Operation Backpack and the Salvation Army, but that our kitchen, our renewed, refreshed kitchen that you won't have to pay for, that the trusts and endowments of those who thought about the future of our congregation that have gone before us, that through those millions and millions and millions of dollars that we have, that we can restore and refresh our kitchen. And as a community kitchen, we can become our community's congregation. I believe that our students, as we open up our doors and we have pizza and garage bands, and we do it either with the State Theater or in our own place, I believe that's how, not by power, not by might, but by God's spirit, we can change the people of Boyertown and the surrounding area. I believe that white skin and brown skin and black skin can live together. And I believe I've probably said enough.